Welcome to Darren Daily On Demand, your most trusted resource to help you become better every day. Here's your success mentor, Darren Hardy. Good morning and welcome back. So yesterday we started to correct the overcorrection that we made as a society coming out of the everybody gets a trophy syndrome of the self-esteem movement when it comes to praise. I promise to walk you through seven specific praise mistakes that most people make that screw people up even against your best intentions. So here's how parents, leaders, and coaches muck this up and do it wrong. Here's what not to do and then what to do instead. You ready? Here we go. Number one, don't praise the outcome. Praising the outcome, like this is so beautiful, great job, even though you mean well, can create a persistent performance anxiety. It can now be interpreted as a condition of your love. If it is not beautiful next time, you won't love them the same. It puts a fixation on outcome approval. They are only good, they are only loved, if they get the right result. Instead, you want to praise the process, the effort, the character attributes used to create the result. So that sounds like, I love the way you colored every corner of that picture, or what a beautiful combination of colors that you chose, or this must have taken you a long time to complete, what great discipline you have to see it through and finish it. You see, when children are praised on their effort, Instead of their selves, children gain confidence and feel empowered to try new things. As a child psychologist has said, when it comes to praise, there's more on the line than just boosting self-esteem. A parent's job is to shape children's behavior. And that is exactly right as a leader of a team as well. You're not just using praise to validate and boost confidence, you are shaping your team's behavior. You wanna focus your praise on the behavior you want the one you want amplified and repeated, the behavior you know is consistently necessary to produce the result that you want delivered. Does that make sense? That's the key to building and leading others right there, from four-year-olds to 40-year-olds and above. Number two, don't praise what they can't control. Don't praise by saying things like, you're so smart, you're so pretty, you're so talented, you're so gifted. Again, we know your intentions, but those labels connect an outcome that can mean when I do this, then I am smart. And when I don't do this, I must be stupid. I know this sounds crazy, but that's how it gets interpreted in other people's minds. And it reinforces a fixed mindset that they are this. Rather than the act of what they did to produce this, they are this. They will then avoid all situations and circumstances where them being smart, talented, gifted, or pretty might be threatened. But they can always control whether they are hardworking, disciplined, consistent, kind, caring, compassionate, positive, helpful, giving, etc. Do you see the difference there? Again, this is just as true for big children in your office, at your church, and in your neighborhood as well. Number three, don't overpraise. Your drawing is the most beautiful I've ever seen. This is because this type of praise creates an impossibility, a high standard, and children, small and big, quickly lose motivation in the face of meeting that impossibility again. So go back to points number one and number two. Number four, don't praise insincerely. It can it can trigger bad feelings. This is how you erode self-esteem. They might think that we feel sorry for them or pity them or are trying to be manipulative. They know if something is worthy of praise or not. Insincere praise might also send the message that we don't really understand them. And add to this, don't praise what comes easy. Kids quickly become savvy to the implications. Praising them for achievements that come easy tells them either A, you are clueless about the easy nature of the task, or B, you have really low expectations about their abilities, and neither is good for their self-identity through your eyes. And number six, don't overpraise what they enjoy. It's okay to praise kids for doing what they like to do, but be careful not to go overboard, particularly with older kids. When you praise kids every time they do something that they already enjoy doing, it might actually reduce their motivation. And that's a big tip, parents. You don't want to be the reason they abandon something that they enjoy and are good at just because their instinctive rebellion button gets pushed. And lastly, number seven, don't praise by comparison. Avoid praise that compares your child to others, or one team member to another, or one friend to another. At first blush, it might seem like a good idea to praise kids or colleagues for outperforming their peers, but praising by comparison feels more like a complaint about the other person than a compliment to them. 
the person doesn't walk away feeling encouraged as much as they walk away thinking either A, you don't like that other person very much, and or B, you're a jerk for talking smack about them. Even Paul the Apostle told the Christians living in Corinth at their constant comparing of preachers that it was an indication of their immaturity and their lack of growth. When somebody told Paul, you are my favorite preacher, I grow so much more when you teach than when other Apollo does. Paul said, you are not growing, for since there is envy and strife in you, by your comment, it's evident you are still very immature. You see, this praise stuff is powerful, but it's tricky. It's of the utmost importance to get this right because people's self-esteem, their self-confidence, their self-identity, and their character development is on the line. So to simplify it for you, don't praise the person, you're smart, you're pretty, you're talented, or only the outcome, making them dependent upon the result before they feel like they're worthy. Praise the process. Praise the behavior it took to create the outcome that you now see. Okay, do you get those important distinctions? This was an important mentor chat here this morning. So I hope that you're walking away from this session with gold in our pockets. 